Guys, we need to go to Comic Con this year. You in? Yeah, I always wanted to go. You can't be serious. What? You guys, you're pretty much just buying into this marketing plan. The companies have planned it to be so. You go there, you spend your hundred dollars, you wear their intellectual property, give them more free advertising, and then you pay even more to meet your favorite character, whomever it is, and take a picture with them. So what? Well, actually, Jenna, it kind of draws on a really good point. Uh, I think we were talking a few weeks ago on television about something called audience commodity, where basically everything on TV has to make consumers like it. That's right. But it is also possible that the consumers create the demand and then the television shows follow suit. Let's see. Which I guess kind of brings us to the question, what came first? Well, I definitely argue that the fan base created the demand and then the marketers came in to capitalize on the opportunity. I disagree again. I think marketers create these products tailored towards certain individuals and it may or may not work. It's a risk. But if it does work, that creates demand for their product and television show. So prove it. Okay, so let's think about the audience commodity just one more time here. Television creators and producers, they need to create TV shows centered around the idea of bringing in and attracting an audience, right? If they don't do that, simply put, they won't have the fan base required to put on events at Comic-Con. And what I'm arguing is that we don't necessarily choose what we relate to. What we relate to is a function of our past experiences and our current biases. What we mostly actively discriminate about is quality of a TV show, which is mainly about cinematography and writing. But a quality TV show with a wide enough breadth of characters will attract a wide enough breadth of consumers. But you also kind of have to look on the other side of that. I mean, look at shows like Heroes. They had such a huge fan following and then suddenly everyone got bored with it and everyone basically stopped watching it. I can totally understand what you're saying. But the thing is, every one of our wants are also derived from one of our needs. So if you look at the Sony Walkman, for example, people didn't know that they wanted a Sony Walkman. They probably didn't even know that they wanted the portability aspect of it. They did know, however, that they had a need for stimulation. And when you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we can tell that these fantastic TV shows that end up on a Comic-Con panel deal with our belongingness and love needs. You know that when you look at Game of Thrones, for example, there is the entire breadth of relationships between parents and children, some of which are very functional, some of which are dysfunctional, like trust fund kitties, both male and female, who can never impress their parents. Lannisters don't act like fools. You have the black sheep of the family. I always thought you were a stunted fool. Perhaps I was wrong. Half wrong. You have children who are illegitimate as well as adopted children. Go on, Tommy. Shear him good. He's never met a girl he likes better than his own hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, you have the youngest child who's underappreciated and is secretly the most powerful being in the universe. <laughs> But all these arguments ignore the fact that we aren't dealing with a dumb consumer. Audiences know they're being marketed to, which we also talked about in television. Take a look at this article from Montreal. Consumers are aware that they are a commodity and they're choosing to ignore it. I know that once we walk through those doors, all people will be trying to do is sell to us, but that's not why I want to go. I want to go to have a fun time, to be a part of something more, to connect with people that love and hate the same characters that we do, the way we do, and to meet the people who bring those characters to life. It makes a lot of sense actually, but did the marketer make you want that or did you want it first? <laughs> I guess we'll never really know. Yeah, I definitely agree. Both of you are right, but also wrong. But no matter what way you look at it, the consumer has to be satisfied. That's for sure. So are we going then? <laughs>